All right, so now that we've covered the second derivative and what the second derivative tells us about the graph of a function, we're ready to just start graphing functions using nothing more than the power of the first and the second derivatives. Okay, so let's just work through an example um, and then I, I'll kind of point out the, the general process of graphing. Okay, so let's start with an example. Let's say our function is f of x equals minus x cubed plus nine over two x squared minus six x plus three, right? So it's just some random polynomial and we want to plot this, right? We want to graph this by hand and right away, you know, okay, it's a cubic and it shifted and there's all sorts of things going on here. So it's kind of hard to just be able to, to plot this without using this derivative method, okay? So we're gonna use the first and the second derivative to get information about what this function should look like and then we'll kind of piece it together from there. Okay, so we'll start by taking the first and second derivatives, okay? So let's take the first derivative. Let's make this in blue. So f prime of x, right, by the power rule, this is minus three x squared, right? Power comes down and then you reduce it by one. Same thing here, right? Power rule says this becomes nine over two times two, which gives us nine. I'll just write that down. Nine over two times two x, right? Power comes down and then reduce it. Then six x plus three just becomes minus six, right? Or plus zero, whatever you wanna say. Okay, so let's write this out. Minus three x squared plus nine x minus six. This is our first derivative, f prime of x. Okay, we'll also take a second derivative, right? F double prime, right? So one, two apostrophes here. So we take the power rule of that, we get minus six x. That gives us that derivative of minus three x squared then this becomes plus nine, and then that is just goes away, right? Constant becomes zero, plus zero, okay? And then nine x becomes nine, right? That's the slope of a line. Okay, so we have our first derivative here in blue. We have our second derivative. And in order to kind of understand what this function looks like, we're gonna have to know where's our first and second derivatives, where are those positive or negative, right? So let's make a nice, um, table, right? So let's start with f, right? Versus f prime will be here and f double prime, okay? And then let's pick some relevant x values, okay? And so depending on these x values, we'll be able to draw our function, okay? So what x values should we even be thinking about, right? What x value should I be interested in, you know, plotting where f prime is positive or negative, where f double prime is positive or negative, right? To start with, I should just look for where, you know, these things are zero, right? Find those x values, and then I'll be able to find the function behavior around those, right? So let's find first, we will find where, f double prime of x is equal to zero, right? Right, so this is, we said minus six x plus nine, right? So this is zero when nine is equal to six x, right? or six x equals nine, by just moving that to the right hand, to the left hand side. So then x is nine over six, or if we divide by three, this gives us three over two, right, or 1.5. Right, so 1.5 is an inflection point, right? So x equals 1.5 is an inflection point. Okay, and then we also need to find the critical points, right? So find where f prime of x is equal to zero, right? So that, if we go back to f prime, that's minus three x squared plus nine x minus six minus three x squared plus nine x minus six. And here it will help if we can factor this, right? So if we factor this out, let's see, we can do minus three x um, minus, let's say two, right? 
and then, sorry, minus three, and then x minus two, right? If I factor that out, right, this gives me minus three x squared, right? Multiplying these two together, and I get a minus three x, uh, I guess this should be a plus. I get a plus three x, and I get a minus times minus three gives me plus six x, so I get plus three x plus six x gives me the nine x, and then the three times the minus two gives me minus six. So this is how you would factor it out, All right? And so then this form says that the zeros are two and one, right? So these are critical points of our function because that's where the derivative, first derivative is zero. Okay, so now we have some interesting points, right? So let's say, We'll do x less than one, right? Let's make this in black. We'll have x less than one here. And then x equals one. And then we'll have x between one and 1 1.5, right? That inflection point. And then we'll have x is bigger than 1.5, but less than two. Sorry, we don't need this one. Uh, x equals one, one to 1.5. And then we'll do x equals 1.5. Then we'll do between 1.5 and two, and x equals two. And then we'll finally have x bigger than two. Okay, so we found all the points that are interesting, right? We found the inflection point, the two critical points, and now we want to look at the function at those points and around them. So at x equals one, right? We said that's where the derivative was zero, right? So it was zero at x equals one and it was zero at x equals two. We haven't looked at the second derivative there, but at x equals 1.5, right? That's where the second derivative was zero, right? So I'll put that here. Okay, so then you just have to ask, well, where is the second derivative negative? Where's the second derivative positive? And then where's the first derivative positive? Where's the first derivative negative? And then I'll tell us something about f, okay? So the second derivative is only zero at x equals 1.5, so it can't change sign anywhere else. Right? So if we look at f double prime, it's minus six x plus nine. So when x is less than 1.5, right? Well, let's say like x equals one. Let's just pick an example. Let's try x equals one. Right? At x equals one, f prime, double prime, sorry, is minus six, right? This is f double prime of one equals minus six plus nine equals minus three, right? It is a negative number, right? So this is negative here. And because we haven't hit zero yet, it has to be negative here as well and over here as well. And you could try any other point, right? You could plug in, let's say, 1.1 uh, into here, and you'd see that that indeed will be negative. You can try plugging in, you know, something less than one. You could try plugging in zero, right? Um, sorry, this is positive. My bad. Right? Try plugging in zero, right? F double prime of zero is nine, which is positive, right? So it's always positive on the left. And then at x equals 1.5, the second derivative becomes zero. And then on the right, right, so let's try at x equals two. We'll have f double prime of two, that's minus 12 plus nine equals minus three, which is negative, okay? And then for the same reason, right, it hasn't passed through zero yet, so this has to be negative and that has to be negative. So you could try plugging in, you know, a big number like 10, right? Then you have minus 60 plus nine, that'd be a negative number, right? And in general, you know, once you've found the zero, then you only have to check the sign of one point on either side to know the derivative, you know, if it's positive or negative on that whole interval, right? So anything less than this inflection point, the second derivative is positive. Anything greater than that inflection point, the second derivative is negative, okay? And so what that means is that f will be concave up and then it will switch, right? So here it will be an inflection point And then it will be concave down. Concave down. 
for the rest of this. Right. So it's concave up on the left and then concave down on the right. Okay. So let's do the same thing for the first derivative, right? At these two zeros, it's zero. So at the critical points, the first derivative is zero. That's what we found. So then let's try, let's say, x equals 1.5, right? What happens here? Well, f prime of x, which we're going to write in this way because it's easier to see the sign for this, right? So this is just the factored out version. Right? If I try x equals 1.5, f prime of 1.5 is negative 3 times 1.5 plus 3 times 1.5 minus 2, right? So this gives me negative 4.5 plus 3 times negative 0 0.5. So this gives me negative 1.5 times negative 0 0.5, which gives me a positive uh, ooh, 5. And then I want to say this is 1.75. Uh, no, just 0 0.75. So then that's a positive number, okay? So if we go here, right, between our two critical points is that inflection point where we just checked what the first derivative is. We saw that the first derivative is positive here, right? So because it's positive at this point, it has to be positive to left and to the right of it until we get to zero, okay? And then to check the sign to the left of this critical point, we just plug in any old point and same thing on the right. So let's try you know, x equals zero, that's less than one, right? So we try x equals zero, right? We get f prime of zero equals zero plus three, zero minus two, negative six, which is negative, right? So that means that the first derivative is negative on the left. Let's try something bigger than two. Let's try, I don't know, x equals 10, right? f prime of 10 is then negative three times 10 plus three times 10 minus two. This gives me minus 30 plus three times eight, which gives me negative 27 times eight, which is some number. We don't need to compute it, but it is negative, right? It's some negative number, 27 times eight. So that means that for X bigger than two, the first derivative is negative always, right? And the bigger and bigger x gets, the still this first derivative will always be negative because the only zeros were at x equals one and x equals two, okay? So now we have uh, the first derivative information. So we know that f is decreasing when x is less than one. At x equals one, we have a critical point. For x between one and 1.5, it's increasing, right? And then it's still increasing here increasing here and here it's zero again. So then this function would be a zero slope at this point. So it's neither increasing or decreasing. And then for X bigger than two, now it's decreasing again. Okay. So this went concave up is kind of the shape here, right? And you can see that that has decreasing and then increasing, right? So that decreasing, increasing, which means this point here is a local minimum. Right? It's kind of the bottom of a well, right? It's the minimum value of my function near this point. And then same thing over here, right? This is concave down, which looks like that, which is increasing and then decreasing, right? So this one was decreasing, increasing. Now it's increasing, decreasing, which means when it's zero at the top, right? That would be a local maximum of our function. Right? because it's kind of the top of the hill. It's the maximum value of our function nearby this point. And now that we have this nice big table, we can start kind of drawing this picture, right? And so it helps to have some reference values of f to look at. So let's find the value of f at the local min, max, and maybe this inflection point, and then we can kind of piece this together from there, okay? So let's draw my function. Let me do a nice big graph. Okay. And let's make this, there we go. Okay, so this will be our graph. And 
our points of interest are x equals 1, 1 1.5, and 2. So let's mark those on the graph. So let's say this is 1. This will be 1.5. And that will be 2. OK? So at x equals 1, right? So our function, recall, our function is negative x cubed plus 9 over 2x squared minus 6 plus 3. Okay, so negative x cubed plus 9 over 2x squared minus 6x plus 3. So at f of 1, right, f of 1 is negative 1 plus 9 over 2 minus 6 plus 3. Right, so this gives me the value. So 9 over 2 is like 4.5. So we have minus 7 plus 3 gives me 4. And then plus sorry, minus seven plus three gives me minus four, plus 4.5 gives me positive 0 0.5. So let's mark that, let's mark it here. This will be 0 0.5. So this is our first point. And let's try our inflection point, or maybe let's just try f of two. Inflection point looks difficult. Right, so that gives me minus eight plus nine over two times four, minus six times two is 12 plus three. Okay, so 9 over 2 times 4 gives me 18, right? So the 2 cancels, and I'm left with 9 times 2, which is 18. Minus 8 is 10. Minus 12 is minus 2. Plus 3 is then 1. Okay, so then this will be at 1. We'll be here. Okay. And now that we have two points, let's, let's try one more point, something easy. Let's try f of 0, right? That would be 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 3. So we know at 0, it's 3. So this would be 2, 1, 3 up here. So that's our third point. And now I guess we're ready. OK, so between, you know, 3 and 1, right? So when x is less than 1, right, our function is decreasing. And our concavity is positive, right? So it's concave up. So our function is going to decrease from 3 to 1, and it's going to be concave up. Right, so it's going to be up like that. OK, and then from 1 to 2, my derivative is positive. So my function is increasing. Right, That was a local minimum there. So my function is going to increase, increase, increase up to this local maximum at x equals 2, and then it will decrease again. Right, And the concavity will be up. And then at 1.5, it's going to flip to concave down. OK, so it's going to increase to 2, to, to x equals 2. So it's increasing, and then it decreases from there. Right, so let's just draw it like this. And since it's always decreasing here, so it's decreasing, 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 and the concavity is positive. right? And then it's increasing, 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 and then it hits this local maximum, and then it starts decreasing. So then at x equals 1.5, you know, we didn't really figure out this value, but it's somewhere between 0.5 and 1, right? And at this point, it's going to flip from up to down, right? Oops. So it's going to go. Oh, my goodness. Let's draw this up again. It's difficult to sketch nicely. There we go. So this is, okay, up. Let's write that in red the second derivative, right? Concave up, and then at this point here, it switches to concave down, right? It's going downwards. It's up like that, and then it's down like that, okay? And so that's how you would go about, you know, graphing this function, just purely from this sign table, right? So you find your function, right? We wanna know where this function is concave up, where it's concave down, where it's decreasing, increasing, and then where these local mins and maxes are, right? And to find all this information that I have in the first row, I had to look at the second derivative to know the concavity, and I had to look at the first derivative to know where it's positive. Negative tells me where the function's decreasing or increasing, where these local max and mins are, is where those uh, first derivative is zero. Where the second derivative is zero is just where I have that inflection point, right? Where I'm switching from concave up to concave down, right? And you can see here, this is a local min, Let's write that, right? This is a local minimum because it's the smallest value nearby. It's not the smallest value overall, right? Because it decreases over here, 
but it's the smallest value close by. And then the same thing here, right? This here is a local maximum. Maximum. Because it is the largest value nearby. Largest value of the function in a small neighborhood. In a small neighborhood. Right, so just close to this point, it's the biggest value. And then down here, minimum is the opposite, right? The smallest value of the function or most negative value, right? Uh, nearby this point, right? It becomes more negative over here, but near to this point, it's the smallest. Same thing here. This is the biggest value of the function near that point. It gets bigger over here on the left, but it's the biggest value in some small neighborhood, right? And that corresponds exactly to where you have a zero slope tangent, right? Zero slope tangent, right? Or f prime of x equals zero, right? Zero first derivative, but a positive second derivative. I mean, it gives you a minimum because that tells you you're a bowl shape at the bottom of a bowl, right? Because it's concave up. So that tells you it's a local minimum. Local maximum would be you know, again, f prime of x equals zero, but f double prime negative, right? It's a negative bowl, right? It's concave down, so that tells you you're at the top of the hill, okay? And so this is the general process for, for graphing these functions, and we'll do more of these in, in class too.